So, hello. Uh, during this time of social distancing due to the COVID-19 virus and churches not being able to meet, I um, wanted to just make sure that we kind of tried to continue on with the junior and senior high Bible study that we would be doing on Sunday mornings, provide you with the opportunity. So we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 38. Uh, since I can't call on anybody, I'll just read it myself. And with that said, I'd encourage you to, to go through and, and look at the passages yourself and, and review this on your own as you, as you have an opportunity. Just see what the Lord leads for you. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verses uh, 21 through 38. And at the end of eight days when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years, and when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Now, I'm not going to stop this video and redo if there's mispronunciations or anything like that. So you guys are just going to have to deal with it. So I guess the first thing to ask is... Um, and hopefully you can see this on the screen. Uh, why did Luke share this story about Jesus' childhood? And then what is important about Jesus' dedication? And so much that, that Luke would share it. So, you know, when you, you go to the beginning of Luke, it, he, he is talking about, you know, the, as we talked before, Luke and Acts were two bi books of the Bible that were written together. They were written to should be shared with uh, a Theophilus, and there's a whole discussion about who Theophilus was. Was that a real person? Was that a group of people? And we could get in that discussion, but we're not going to we're not going to jump back into that. But I want you, as we look at, as you read through this passage, as we go through this this study this this time, ask these questions. You know, why did Luke share this story about Jesus' childhood? There wasn't a lot of stories that were shared um, about Jesus' childhood. There's very few, and we don't know a lot about it, and, and, you know, how Jesus grew up, about his family life at, when he was young, but for some reason, Luke shared these two. So let's, first of all, you know, hopefully you can see this on the screen here. Um, this is kind of a rendition of what the second temple that possibly was what, where Jesus was, was being dedicated you can look this up online, you know, you can go to Wikipedia. You, uh, this one, I think, uh, came from a, a website that was selling replicas of it. So that, you know, think about how big, how ornate, and things like that it was. But Jesus was being presented at this temple. And Simeon was walking around. There's a discussion of, of what he was doing. But, um, you know, that, let's first talk about the, the first thing. Um, coming in this passage, looking at, at verse 20, 
2, it says, And when the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up from the Jer Jerusalem to present him to the, lo uh, the Lord. So eight days after he was born, he was given the name Jesus, which was a name that the angels had told Mary and, and Joseph to, to name him. And they followed that suit. And then 40 days later, uh, they, they're presenting him to the, the temple. And following um, Genesis 17, 12, which says, he, was, he who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised every male throughout your generations. So they're following Genesis chapter 17, verse 12. They're also following Exodus 13, 2, which is saying, Consecrate to me all firstborn whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both man and beast is mine. So some other things that we notice um, later on, you know, and it quotes this, uh, um, this passage here, but it says, And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Well, now this is coming right from Leviticus chapter 12, verse 8. And in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 8, it says, If she cannot afford a lamb, then she shall take two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for her and she shall be clean. So what we're seeing here in the first three, four pa uh, verses of this passage, we're seeing that Mary and Joseph are being obedient to what the, the angel of the Lord, the angel that came to them, said to do. They're following the, the, the instructions there. They're also being obedient to the Mosaic law. They're following what the Mosaic law required. And from that, in Luke, it just says, it talks about the two turtle doves or two pigeons being offered. But in reality, what we, what we learn here, if you go back to Leviticus chapter 12, it says to present a lamb, but if you cannot afford that lamb, you are to present two pigeons or two turtle doves. So what that's telling us about Mary and Joseph is that they are not a rich family. They're not um, overly wealthy because they weren't able to afford that lamb for the offering. But trying to follow the, the Mosaic law, trying to be obedient to the Mosaic law, they are, they are doing what they can afford. And that's something that you know, is kind of interesting to think about as a side note. Um, you know, the Lord understands where you are financially and and where you are in everything that's going on in your life. So he makes uh, allotments for those who can't afford what, what, they, um, what he's calling for. He, he will provide. And that's something that, you know, during these times to really, really be thinking about. Now, another thing that's interesting about this is when you look at Jesus himself, Galatians 4.4 4 tells us, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. So I've asked this before, and I wanted you to think about it. Why now? Why was Jesus born at this particular time? And in Galatians 3.16, it says, Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring who is Christ. So when you are looking at this passage in Galatians and you're looking at Jesus, Jesus is fulfilling the law. In fact, Matthew five seventeen to 20, Jesus himself says, do not think that I've come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So, Jesus' fulfillment of the law can be seen as a direct... Um, outflowing of what he sees in his parents. His parents are fulfilling the law. They're doing it to the best of their abilities, following the, the guidance that, that they see in, in Leviticus and Exodus and, and Genesis. And they're presenting him in the in temple, doing the sacrifices that they're supposed to be doing. And they're, Jesus himself 
goes on to say that he is not abolishing that law. He is fulfilling that law. So his life is a fulfillment. And in this, we go on and we go, you know, who is this Simeon? Um, there's a lot of discussion about who he could be. He, you know, people talk about him being a prophet, um, a, a priest. Some people talk about him being um, uh, uh, just a Greek in, in the temple area. Um, we're not told. We're not filled in on that. But what, what we do know and, and is that, and, and well, what we, we, in studying, I found, um, we, it's told that Simeon could be as old as 200 years old when he meets Jesus. Um, that's what tradition says. But my guess is he was probably a priest serving in the temple at the time. And this presentation occurred 40 days after Jesus' birth. This meeting is commemorated in um, church tradition on February 2nd and 3rd. Sometimes, depending on the calendar, they talk about February 16th. And it's known as uh, Candlemas, or, or more formally, the presentation of the Lord, the meeting of the Lord, or the purification of the Virgin. So they're, they're talking about, um, you're talking about in more of the um, Anglican, Eastern Orthodox churches, they, they, this is presented and uh, celebrated. But w we need to look at what did Simon prophesy? Simon prophesied uh, right out of Isaiah 8, 14 through 15. And he will become a sanctuary and a stone of offense and a rock of stumbling to the, both houses of Israel, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many shall stumble on it. They shall fall and be broken. They shall be snared and taken. When what he is saying there, and this is coming out of verse 34, it says, And si uh, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. He, he blessed them and then shared that Jesus will be a stumbling stone a, 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 for the many in Israel. Uh, something that is... Mary's not going to recognize or understand until maybe 30 plus years down the road. So this is something that if you read through many times in, in the, the presentation of the Christmas narrative, what you will see is it says that Mary um, treasured these things or pondered these things. And this is something that she probably pondered and treasured for a long time. You know, what does this mean? And it was something that was a probably a comfort for her later on. So here's something to think about for you as an individual in this this passage. Um, you know, Simeon, they're talking about him being very old. How, you know, how long was, was he living with the promise that he would be able to see the Messiah? Because, you know, it says here in, in verse 25, now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it, had been, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, or the Lord's Messiah. So, how long had he, had he been serving here? How long had he been in the temple? How long had he been waiting? You know, tradition says 200 years old. You know, did he get this prophecy this promise when he was 30 did he get us when he was 80 we don't know but he relied on that promise he relied on that uh, prophecy and he kept serving so for many of us you know we we want a quick fix we want a uh, a rapid response to everything that that happens in our lives and even in this time you know you know we don't know what's going on we don't. We we do know that God is in control. We do know that God loves us and and He wants the best for us. And sometimes that best includes sometimes some difficulties and trials. Yeah. You know, how many times did Simeon show up at the temple, just going, "Another day is today, today," and then how many times did he leave that evening, going, "I'm you know another day that that nothing happened." So you know. The, there's a consistency, there, there's a, a promise there, but he was set up there as an encouragement to Mary. Think about that. There is a, this prayer, just as a side note, um, 
and I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this, but uh, it comes out of the Latin nunc dimittis, and it's Latin for now let depart. So basically, think about this. He'd been serving in this temple. He'd been coming to the temple for our, who knows how many years, and now he knows his task is done, his service is done. And he says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your words. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to the people of Israel. That comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 29 through 32 in the ESV. Think about it. He, he's now understanding his time on earth is done because he has met and fulfilled the prophecy that God had in the promise that God has given him. That's kind of interesting. Right after this, we see in verse 36, and there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping and with fasting and prayer night and day. So what do we know about Anna from this passage? Well, just from these three verses, we find out that she was a prophetess. She was a daughter of Phanuel. She was a member of the tribe of Asher. She was widowed after seven years of marriage, and her husband is not named here, so we don't know who he is. She was a devout Jew who was regularly practicing, or who practiced prayer and fasting. And Luke describes her as very old. Now, that's kind of where a lot of people get hung up. They, they this very old. Um, when you start <laughs> looking at it and you start studying it, um, I won't try saying the Greek, um, um, but the, the Greek basically translated says she was a widow of 84 years. So what a lot of people go was, was she widowed for 84 years or was she 84 years old as a widow? And, and they go back and forth. The passage is ambiguous. It, it could mean she was 84 years old. It should, could mean she was widowed for 84 years. So meaning that she was married at about the age 14 and she was married for seven years and she, she was 84 years as a widow, which puts her to somewhere around 105 years old. So here again, here's somebody that is serving in the temple for a long period of time. Whether she's serving for, you know, 60 something years or whether she's serving for 84 years, we don't know. But she is serving and when she meets Jesus, she just began prophesying and proclaiming and giving thanks to God and telling everybody about him and about the redemption of, of of Jerusalem. So when she sees him, she recognizes him. Now here's the interesting thing. Back up in verse 26, it says, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. And in this passage, we see the Holy Spirit revealed. It isn't until after Jesus' death that the Holy Spirit comes into um, full action in, in our lives each and every day. But you can see in the Old Testament, you can see in this passage that the Holy Spirit is not just sitting on the sidelines. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are active in the entire history of this, this world. And in this instance, the Holy Spirit is doing what its job is to do and is to point people to, to Jesus, to point people to Christ, to give them prophecies, give them encouragement of what to do and what to say. So going back... And looking back at the original questions, why did Luke share this story about Jesus' childhood? My personal belief from what we've studied here is to share about how Jesus' spirit works, how to share about Jesus' life, but to share about how God works, how God reveals Christ to those around us, to show some prophecies and his consistency. Um, and what is important about Jesus' dedication? So here, here's four things. Number one, this passage shows Jesus, uh, Mary and Joseph's dedication. Their, their dedication to being obedient and following what the angels told them to do and being obedient and following the, the um, 
the Mosaic Law. It shows how God keeps his promises, how he follows through. And sometimes those prophecies, those promises might take a long time. Sometimes those promises might take a short time. We as, as men and as women of Christ need to look at it and go, God, help me to be faithful during this time. Jesus was a fulfillment of prophecy. There's multiple passages that are revealed here where it is showing how Jesus is fulfilling that prophecy, fulfilling that Mosaic law. And we learn, as we, we said, uh, read in Galatians chapter 4 and Galatians chapter 3, that you know the promises were being fulfilled by Jesus. Matthew 5, 17 through 20, the prophecy, Jesus did not come to, to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So we, we see how that is, even in an early age, that is happening. And again, during this time of, of confusion, during this time of, of waiting, I, I would encourage you to, to look, at, look at this passage and ask yourself, God, what promises do we have that, that I need to be holding on to? And how can I be faithful in revealing you to those around me? I hope you have a wonderful time on Sunday. Uh, I know things are going to be different, um, but I'd like to close in prayer and just uh, ask for God's blessing during this time. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your word. I thank you for the promises that it has, and I ask that you would help each and every one of us, especially during this questionable time, to be able to rely on the the promises and the fact that you are in control, that you love us and you care for us. And may we be an encouragement one to another during this time. And may we take the opportunities we have to reveal and share Jesus with those around us. Again, I thank you. I praise you for what you've been to us and what you've promised and how you have offered that salvation. And we pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Hope you have a wonderful Sunday.